Quartz versus calcite. Two white minerals that can really trip you up when you're looking at them. Uh, there are some very obvious ways to tell the difference. However, if you haven't learned it, it's not obvious yet. So let's talk about how we can tell the difference between quartz and calcite. First of all, there's a hardness test. All right, quartz will scratch glass. All right, calcite will not scratch glass. So that's a real quick way. If you got a piece of scrap glass, I mean, don't take it to your car window or anything, obviously. But if you got a piece of scrap glass or a, a glass bottle or something, real easy to do a hardness test on it. If it scratches the glass, you're looking at quartz. And if it doesn't, you're probably looking at calcite. There are other ways to tell too, however. First of all, the, the key difference between quartz and calcite, quartz is SiO2, silicon dioxide. Calcite is CaCO3, calcium carbonate. All right, very different. Uh, they really have nothing in common except for oxygen and their chemical structure. However, they both are very common on the Earth's surface. They both form white minerals. Another way to tell the difference between uh, the two, besides the hardness, is the crystal habit. That's the shape of the crystals. All right? Quartz is famous for forming uh, what I call like the Superman's uh, hideaway type crystals. You get these beautiful hexagonal shaped crystals Let's do make it look a little bit better here. And these come up to a point like so, right? Calcite forms a completely different uh, structure. They form these almost cubes. I tend to call them cubes. They're not actually cubic. They're almost right angles. You get these crystal structures that look like this. So in fact, when people ask me, Am I, I've got a little pocket of crystal here. Am I looking at quartz or calcite? I say, well, does it look pointy in there? Or does it look like uh, a city skyline? Does it look like you know, New York City, you know, high rises? Uh, because you get these blocky shapes in there. And we'll look at a, a few examples of that over here. We're gonna come over to my cabinet of wonders. I'm gonna show this classic piece of quartz here. Very classic quartz shape, you will not uh, find them this big, usually not in Michigan at least, or other parts of the country you can find them real large like that. Uh, here's one uh, from the Ford Exploration Pits. If you zoom way in on this, you'll be able to see that, it, that these are just coated with these pointy quartz crystals all over it. It's actually manganese crystals on the bottom that's got quartz crystals coating it. This came from the Upper Peninsula. But if we take a look at some calcite examples now, let me just open this up here. Take a look at some calcite examples here. This is calcite. Notice we're not getting those pointy nice crystals, but what we actually got are these very nice blocky structures in it. And the smaller the, the breaks in them are, the smaller they are, but it's this repeating pattern. We've heard that as the cleavage, when it breaks that way, following a specific pattern. Take a look at another example here. This is a, a great one here. Again, we're seeing these, all these little blocky structures all throughout that classic calcite. Rarely can you tell the difference between calcite and quartz based on color, but these shapes, the cleavage and crystal habit, are always a giveaway. You can follow me to the table over here. 
they've got quartzites over here, and they have no discernible cleavage, no repeating patterns of any kind. However, over here, we have a calcite. Again, look at those blocky repeating shapes, very sharp sides. Almost cubes, but not truly cubes. They're like cubes that have been tilted just a little bit. Now, there is one other trick, and every geologist in the field carries it with them. Calcium carbonate, calcite, is basically what Tums and acids are made out of. Well, what does that do in acid? Well, it dissolves. And so if you have a piece that you're just not certain about, that is not the right chemical, it's algin red. That's why it's always important to read your bottles before you take them out. Here we go, there we go. HCL, very professionally labeled by yours truly. We come over here and you're not sure what you've got, you can always test it chemically. So here's, here's a quartzite, say you're not sure if this is calcite or quartz in here, well, let's just put a drop of, of hydrochloric acid on there and you'll see it does absolutely nothing at all. All right, now I'm just gonna wipe that off. I already know this is calcite, but let's say that I didn't know it was calcite. Let me find a piece here that I don't mind messing up just a little bit. Put a drop on. Real different reaction, right? Just like that, all right? And that's how every geologist identifies calcite. If they have any question about it whatsoever, you drop acid, all right? But you may not have hydrochloric acid at home. Hydrochloric acid is very easy to buy. It's sold as a pool cleaner called muriatic acid, but there's really no reason to go to all that effort because uh, vinegar works just as well. Plain white vinegar. You can put it on a on a calcite, and it'll fizz just like that. Probably not quite as vigorously as that, but that'll that'll tell you the difference. So, what are you looking for? Don't use color, but use the shape of the crystals. Use the breaks in the crystals. You can see quartz and quartzite when they break it, they tend to look like broken glass. Uh, calcite when you break it, it looks like lots of little slightly pushed over cubes. Also, vinegar or hydrochloric acid, that'll tell you. All right, hope that helps.